All right. Push one in the chat if you can hear me. All right, I got a confirmation from the chat. Thank you for that confirmation. Welcome back to the Black Brain Trust. This is episode 573. Space and technology, please hit the like button as you come in, share the video if possible, and hit that notification bell so you get all the updates from the Black Brain Trust, including those posted on the community tab. There's a doc in the description of the video for you to follow along with. If you want to engage in this discussion, there'll be a link in the chat for you to click on. When you click on the link, make sure you raise your hand so that one of us can acknowledge you and advance you to the panel. Link is in the chat for those who want to join the discussion. Let me give a shout out to the people who first showed up uh, so far. Eugene Black, uh, salute to you as, as always. Uh, Rain and Woman, good evening to you as always. And thank you for all the assistance that you provided to the Black Brain Trust. And we'll get started with the first item on the docket. Uh, we did do our first upload uh, the other day. Um, I posted a uh, workout video, uh, one that I did uh, a few weeks back. So. Um, if you haven't checked that out, make sure you check that out in the uh, in the archives that was posted the other day. Um, the comments were disabled, so I, I enabled the comments. I don't know why it did that. Um, YouTube does have its uh, way of doing things. And we'll get started. All right, this is from space.com, the first item on the docket. Weird green glow spotted in the atmosphere of Mars. Screen this out. The atmosphere of Mars has a distinct green glow, just like Earth's. The European Space Agency's Trace Gas Orbiter, TGO, spotted an emerald glow in, in Mars' wispy atmosphere, marking the first time the phenomenon has been spotted on a world beyond Earth. New study reports, one of the brightest emissions seen on Earth stems from the night glow, more spe uh, specifically from oxygen atom uh, atoms emitting a particular wavelength of light that has never been seen around another planet. Study lead author Jean-Claude Girard of the Université uh, de, la, de la Gige in Belgium. However, this emission has been predicted to exist at Mars for around 40 years. And thanks to TGO, we found it. This is supposed to be the glow that they're rendering here. As Ron noted, the green emission is, character, is characteristic of oxygen. Sky watchers at high latitudes here on Earth can see this green, uh, seen this signature in the ethereal multicolored displays known as the auroras, which are generated by change particles from the sun slamming into molecules high up in the atmosphere. But night glow is different. It caused by the interaction of sunlight with atoms and molecules in the air, which generate a subtle but continuous light. This emission is hard to see, even here on Earth. Observers often need an edge on perspective to make it out which is why some of the best images of our planet's green night glow come courtesy of astronauts aboard the International Space Station. Day glow is the neural uh, component of this constant emission. It's even harder to spot. And it's driven by a slightly different mechanism. 
Night glow occurs as broken apart molecules recombine, whereas day glow arises uh, when the sun's light directly excites atoms and molecules such as nitrogen and oxygen, European Space Agency officials wrote in the same statement. Gerard and his colleagues used TGO's Nadir in oculation for Mars Discovery, Nomad, Instrument Suite, which includes the ultraviolet and visible uh, spectrometer to study the red planet's air in, in a special observing mode from April through December of late last year. Previous observations hadn't been captured in any kind of green glow at Mars, so we decided to reorient the UVIS, the Nidare Channel, to point at the edge of Mars, similar to the perspective you see in images of Earth taken from the ISS. Study co-author and NOMAD principal investigator Anne Kareem Venadale of the Institute of Royal um, Urbanami in Belgium. The team scanned the Martian atmosphere at altitudes between 12 miles and 250 miles. They found the green oxygen glow at all heights through, uh, though it was uh, strongest around 50 miles and up, varied with the uh, red planet's distant, uh, distance from the sun. So this sort of green glow is something that coincides with some of the uh, reports that have been released in the last maybe month or so about how many people would it take to actually create a colony on Mars. And I think they came up with the number of 140 people, men and women. And so if there is a green glow, that means that there is sustain, uh, there, there is the probability of sustainable living on the planet. Now, what would you be doing on there? I have no idea. Um, doesn't make a whole lot of sense as to why anybody would, would want to live there. Um, not like you can get a job or there's any sort of um, you know um, demand and industrialization of that planet, uh, at least at the moment. Um, like I said, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense as to who who would want to live there, uh, but these uh, space agencies have their own agendas and, I, and I'm always curious to know what they're thinking. Um, although I can see the possibility of putting robots up there, that is very viable. A robot colony makes a lot more sense than uh, putting humans up there. But that's just my opinion. All right, man, this is from TechCrunch.com. NASA sees crowdsource help designing a better moon toilet. NASA is getting ready for uh, its Artemis program, which seeks to return Americans to the moon and help establish a permanent presence for humans on the lunar surface with a new crowdsourcing competition launched in partnership with HeroX seeking designs for a better way for astronauts to pee and poo on the, in both space and on the moon. The challenge is open to anyone in the global community of innovators and will span eight weeks with up to $35,000 in prizes available to the winner. So toilet designs uh, sought for this challenge, which will be able to uh, be used by astronauts when they are out of their big bulky EVA uh, suits during the trip to the moon within the Artemis landers that astronauts will be using to return to the lunar surface. NASA notes that while the agency already has microgravity toilets that work perfectly well in use of the, on the uh, International Space Station, the low gravity uh, conditions of the moon will require different designs and also the nature of the trip to, uh, to the moon means they'll be looking for smaller, more efficient, more power efficient designs, because when you're launching a uh, self-contained spaceship, every once in a, <laughs> every ounce and every uh, watt of power used matters a great deal. NASA isn't fully relying on 
uh, the crowd to come up with a unique and innovative uh, uh, space toilet designs. Of course, it already it's already working on miniaturizing, or min sorry, the miniaturization of existing versions in house. But the agency wants to open this up to outside academics, researchers, designers, and engineers because they are hoping that fresh perspective from outside the aerospace industry can help them see potential solutions uh, that otherwise wouldn't have occurred to people used to working in the field. Yeah, this is very true. This is very true. Um, although, uh, I kind of wonder, um, <laughs> you would have to repurpose, you know, urine and, um, and defecation for, for, for uh, sustainable living. I don't think you're gonna use it just to dump it somewhere and then call it a day and bury it inside the um, surface of the moon. I don't think that's gonna be the case. Um, there has to be a way to turn it into um, some form of bricks uh, to that to that um, you know to that point where um, a third party solution, um, a third party uh, Hold on one second. Yeah, had to grab a headset. I'm um, sorry. Um, and so, yeah, th this is not going to be, um, at least from my perspective, something that they just bury inside the ground and call it a day, um, like a landfill. They can't treat the moon as a landfill. They have to come up with a sustainable solution that's going to allow for the urine and, de and uh, defecation to actually be repurposed uh, for sustainable living. So I'd be interested in seeing and hearing about how this even turns out. Um, very interesting in here how this turns out. I mean, this has to, <laughs> this has to work, right? Um, it, I, I can't imagine that they, you know, they would leave human waste up there and then, then all of a sudden leave because this is a long-term strategy. Now, what they plan on doing up there, I have no idea. Um, like I said about Mars earlier, I don't see there's no industrialization on the moon. It makes sense if you use robots to build up, you know, the infrastructure, and then you have humans come up there and, and stay temporarily, um, like they do in Antarctica. But it doesn't make a whole lot of sense why you just send humans up there to just occupy it. What, what's the point of that? All right, let me move on to the next item on the docket. All right, next item on the docket is from Engadget.com. California push for zero emissions heavy truck starts in 2024. The goal is to curb the state's largest source of air pollution. The state of California is requiring all trucks to be zero emissions uh, beginning in 2024, thanks to a new mandate from the California Air Resources Board or CARB. 
The regulation, which CARB calls the first in the world, is meant to be a step towards California meeting its long-term emissions goals. The rule would apply specifically to medium and heavy duty trucks weighing, uh, weighing 8,500 pounds or more. Under the mandate, every new truck sold in California will be zero emission by 2045, according to CARB. It further states that by 2035, the state will have an all zero emissions short, uh, short haul dryage fleet in ports and rail yards. And that by 2040, there will be a there will be zero emissions last mile delivery trucks in vans. Interesting. CARB says trucks account for 70% of the smog causing pollution and 80% of the carcinogenic uh, diesel soot, uh, soot in uh, California, making them the biggest source of the state's air pollution. The state is aiming for a 40% reduction in greenhouse gases by 2030 and 80% reduction in greenhouse gases by 2050. So it makes sense bold mandates uh, would be put forth to meet uh, bold goals. The mandate is just in the, in the latest and changes that would make zero emission trucks more common on the highway. A group of electric utility companies in California, Oregon, and Washington state are currently working to propose an EV truck friendly highway uh, through the West Coast Clean Transit Corridor Initiative. More vehicle manufacturers, including Nic uh, Nicola, Toyota, and Tesla are trying to be part of the solution by working to get electric semi trucks onto the market. This is very aggressive, okay? 2024 is not that far away. It's only 2020 right now. Uh, we'll be in July later this week. And so you're talking about in the next 30, you know, the next 32 uh, months, next 32 months that they're talking about push for the, uh, zero emissions. This is like, you know, you don't have the infrastructure in place. See, if you have the infrastructure in place, then you can push for something like this, but you don't have it in place ready. And so we don't know what, what else could deter, um, you know, um, disrupt this sort of uh, goal, right? Um, a pandemic shut us down, you know, for, for a little over three months and, and things just fell apart. Uh, I can't imagine you, that they will push for something like this by 2024. Now by 2030, makes a lot of sense, but 2024, that's too soon. That's too soon. A lot of your trucks that are coming off the assembly line, assembly line right now are nowhere near zero emissions, okay? Nowhere near zero emissions. And, and <laughs> the technology takes too long uh, 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 to develop to actually um, have a date like this. Um, so it seems to be a really aggressive sort of uh, strategy. Like I said, build the infrastructure first and then you can have that conversation. All right, let me jump to the next item on the docket. All right, this is from techcrunch.com. In an effort to fight COVID-19, MIT robot gets to work disinfecting the Greater Boston Food Bank. Interesting. MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab, Castle, has put one of its research uh, projects to work providing disinfection services for the Greater Boston Food Bank. In an effort to slow the spread of the COVID-19 and still allow the nonprofit to provide services to its patrons. The Cassell Design Robotics System, which was created in partnership with Ava Robotics, can not only disinfect services that might have come in contact with the novel coronavirus, but also wipe out its aerosolized uh, forms that might be present in the air, the lab says. Uh, Cassell's robotic cleaning system goes well beyond your run-in-the-mill Roomba and employs UV light for a fully automated clean 
uh, sorry, for a fully automated clean that can be done free of any human oversight, which is key because UV light, when used in strength uh, required for surface and airborne disinfection, can be harmful to any people present. The team behind the design took one of uh, uh, Ava's telepresence robots, removed the top, which normally houses the screen to display a remote operator, and replaced it with a UVC light array. Via cameras and sensors, the robot can map an indoor space, then navigate design waypoints that map uh, within that map uh, area and disinfect it as it goes keeping uh, track of the areas it has to disinfect. In operation after uh, its, anonymous, its autonomous mapping exercise, human robot operators showed it the path that would normally uh, traverse in the office to determine priority disinfection zones. The system is flexible so that it can handle remap routes which is required because the areas of the GF, uh, sorry, the Greater Boston Food Bank warehouse that need to be traversed can't change daily as food comes in and food goes out with stock stored on different shelves. Eventually, the team wants to develop more automated uh, ways for the modified telepresence robots to use their suite of sensors to figure out which areas are priority to uh, for disinfection based on foot traffic and changing real world conditions for now. It can be easily mainly adjusted to accommodate shifts. The project focused specifically on the use of the Greater Boston Food Bank, a priority resource, uh, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. But MIT's Castle researchers envisioned similar systems being used to cover a range of complex spaces that require frequent disinfection, including grocery stores, dorms, schools, and airplanes. This is interesting, um, really interesting strategy. I think, um, I think we talked about this maybe a month or so ago, um, this sort of strategy being used before this article even came out, um, that using UV, um, UV light um, against COVID is a strategy, uh, but no one had really tested it. And so what I'm saying here is that um, this may be the new strategy for all large facilities, schools, um, you know, uh, uh, subways and things like that. Um, I, I can't imagine um, even the airport for that matter. Um, some airports, you know, some of the terminals get shut down and whatnot, th this comes into play. We have been talking about this for a while, but I'd be interested in seeing what the results are. Um, because I, I don't know how you inspect COVID, right? How do you inspect in a facility to determine whether or not COVID is actually there um, and then decide to use one of these? And after it makes its uh, rounds, how would, how would you be able to determine if COVID is still, uh, if COVID is still in the facility or not? It's really, really interesting um, strategy, but I'd be more interested in hearing about the what the results are. All right, next item on the docket is from Engadget.com. Study says road deaths could be cut in half if more safety tech were a standard. Let me expand this out. There's little doubt that modern car safety features can be helpful, but Consumer Reports believes they could be crucial to saving lives. The publication just released a study estimating that U.S. road deaths could be cut by 16,800 to uh, 20,500, or roughly half of the 36,500 people lost in 2018, if certain safety features were standard on every car. Most of the lives saved, 11,800, would come from a 
uh, from a combination of automatic emergency braking, blind spot warning, lane departure warning, and the pedestrian detection. Another 3,700 to 7,400 people could survive with drunk driving prevention tech, particularly the driver alcohol detection system for safety. Certain vehicle to vehicle connections could also save at least 1,300 lives by letting drivers know uh, drivers known when it's safe to move uh, move through an intersection or make a left turn. I'm sorry, the sound that you hear in the back is a lot of fireworks going off. So, Consumer Reports isn't uh, convinced that the self-driving cars are ready to save lives. However, it argues that legislation like the AV Star Act would only have mandated safety levels present on an average human-driven car. The, the outlet still believes autonomous cars have enormous potential for safety improvements. They are, uh, they are just not at that point yet. The timing of the study isn't a coincidence. The House of Representatives is about to vote on the Moving Forward Act, a bill that would require every new car to come with crash avoidance system and drunk driving prevention. It would toughen the standards for uh, five-star safety ratings too. Consumer Reports is hoping, hoping the findings will not only help the bill pass, but spur car makers to include more safety features as standard and avoid trying to uh, trying them, or sorry, tying them to optional luxury items like sunroofs and premium auto, audio. It's not certain just how much the technology would help in practice. Certain features like automatic braking and drunk driving prevention can override drivers. However, warning are Warnings are ultimately optional. There's no guarantee drivers will heed them or react in time, even if the estimate is overly optimistic, though that could still mean saving thousands of lives each year simply by making the technology more commonplace. This is true, okay? This is true. A lot of the time when they try to sell you these vehicles, um, these features are only available in, in premium models, like at the top of the line model. And so, you're missing out even at the base layer. The base layer are, are, are mostly the areas um, where people shop the most, right? They buy the most entry level car they can find. And then when that car goes back onto the used market, that car is sold at a cheaper price and people are moved by uh, total cost of ownership. So if the car is cheap to get into, that's what they're going to get into. But if all the safety standards are the same across the board, then they don't have to compromise, okay? Although I would say that the government should invest into uh, more, um, you know, more smart um, cities and things of that nature. Um, the thing is, if the if the you know the cars maybe you know have all of this uh, smart technology embedded in them, but the city you know the urban environment, you know the urbanization of the environment has not progressed at all. In fact, it remains the same. And so what happens here is your traffic lights, your, um, your your crosswalks, and they're not lit up. I, I've seen in other places, when I was in Rwanda, their crosswalks were lit up, okay? They had little lights on, on the crosswalks. I mean, on the ground, meaning that every time you step on a crosswalk, you know, these little lights would uh, um, emanate as, as, as people cross the street, which I thought was really genius. I'm a, I have never seen that in the United States before, okay? I thought that was pretty interesting. A lot of unique things that they're doing over there. All right, let me jump to the next item on the docket. All right, this is from businessinsider.com. Former Pinterest employees describe a traumatic workplace where managers humiliate employees until they cry. Black people feel alienated and the toxic culture eats away at your soul.
Ozuma, uh, Pinterest public policy and social impact manager, was sitting in the front row for a women's group meeting in a spring twenty in the spring twenty nineteen, when she nearly fell out of her chair. She was watching her boss, a thirty something male, lecture the women how to negotiate for pay raises. His underlying message: adjust your expectations. It wasn't just a message or the fact that two of the three people on the panel offering career guidance for women at Pinterest were men. That was infuriating. Ozuma had been lobbying unsuccessfully to have her pay leveled up to what she said others were, others with her experience and responsibilities were earning and her manager, who she said has stonewalled those efforts and who, and who several other uh, sources identify as Charlie Hale was uh, staring directly at her as she spoke. He took the opportunity on the panel with me sitting in front of the row to then gaslight me by saying things to the entire room full of women like, you should only ask for what you deserve, Ozoma said. Last week, Ozoma and Shimizu Banks, two Black women on Hale's team publicly quit interest, uh, Pinterest and denounced, that, uh, denounced what they describe as a toxic company culture. Ozuma and Banks, despite having hired a lawyer to help them advocate for pay adjustments, did not get the advancement they sought and instead left the company. But what drove them away, they said, was much more than pay. When a Pinterest employee shared Ozuma's personal information with, him, uh, with an internet hate group, she received rape and death threats, she said. Banks was demoted and inter interrogated by the company's private investigator after she lobbied for giving contracts hol contractors holiday pay, she said. Her proposal had em uh, embarrassed a top executive, sources said. Business Insider has since spoken with nine other former Pinterest employees in addition to Ozuma and Banks, eight of whom left the company between 2019 and May. Some shared email documents and other evidence to verify their version of events. These employees work primarily in the New York office. Some work in the San Francisco headquarters or Europe. Although Business Insider knows the identities of the employees, we are honoring their request for anonymy because they, uh, they have not been authorized by the company to speak about their experiences. Many of these former PIN employees, as Pinterest, call, uh, Pinterest employees call themselves, describe a dog-eat-dog -dog culture that they said went well beyond the brilliant jerk standard that's accepted at many Silicon Valley companies. The experience felt particularly devastating to many employees Business Insider spoke with, they said, because they felt duped. Pinterest, uh, uh, Pinterest's visual social media service is a friendly place where nearly 400 million Monthly users swap ideas on fashion, food, crafts, and design with little of the vitriol found on social media networks. The company's motto is the, the last positive corner on the internet. And recruiters sell Pinterest to prospective employees as a nice company with down-to-earth founders whose mission is to help everyone create a life they love, the position <clears throat> Sorry, the opposite uh, of working at uh, in Amazon or Uber, which have cutthroat reputations. I've worked in tech uh, my whole career at Google, Facebook, Pinterest, and it's a pattern at all of them. But Pinterest is particularly bad, said a former sales employee who left the company in 2016, but remains in a social networking group with PIM employees. This woman said she has... Uh, so, sorry, she was so traumatized by her manager's constant criticism of her work that she spent years in therapy. She added that a number of employees, uh, a number of people who had re who had a reputation for being difficult managers from her time there are still part of CEO Ben Silverman's inner circle, including, she said, Hale. Hale declined to comment for this story. Many of these employees painted a picture of a toxic, chaotic culture where they said, People, especially black employees, were suddenly fired or pushed out after meeting and exceeding their performance goals. A macho culture saw employees yelled at, publicly humiliated, or reduced to tears at work. Poor management skills created a culture of firing that 
left everyone fighting for recognition. Internal teams felt pitted against each other and took credit for each other's work. Multiple people suffered stress-induced uh, conditions. Some required medical treatment, including uh, for stroke level, high blood pressure, clinical depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Many women believe they were underpaid compared with what male co-workers were, getting, were earning. Human resources routinely sided with managers when complaints were made. Multiple people said. Those employees were, uh, those employees then often received negative reviews despite meeting performance goals while managers were promoted, they said. Silverman, who was universally described as a nice, quiet, introverted, and pleasant, was seen as someone who wasn't interested in how business managers around him behaved as he focused on the Pinterest user experience. Pinterest decided, uh, declined to uh, comment, pointing us to an email Silverman sent last week in which he acknowledged problems within the, uh, with the culture and vowed to make changes. In a letter to staff last week, Silverman said, parts of our culture is broken and described the stories of black employees who feel like they don't belong at Pinterest or are scared to bring their concerns to HR as devastating. I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't understand the depth of the hardship and hurt many of our team members have experienced. I need to do better. My leaders need to, be, need to do better, Silverman said, according to the email, which was published by Bloomberg News. In an all-hands meeting on Wednesday, after Business Insider published the story of how Ozuma and Banks were demoted, denied promotions, and fielded death threats, uh, Silverman asked anyone who felt they had experienced mistreatment to email him directly. Nearly every former employee who, with whom Business Insider spoke said they reported concerns about their managers or company culture to the company to the human resource resources team. Sometimes multiple times, many of them said they believe their managers have been uh, the subject of complaints from others too. But they felt as if their complaints went into the garbage, as one described it. Sometimes employees who reach out to follow up on a previous report or file a new one were assigned a new HR representative who had no knowledge of their previous complaints, they said. Take, for example, the experience of one former employee from Pinterest San Francisco office, the woman described being tormented by her manager within a year, sorry, for, for a year with head games, which she reported to HR. The manager said, or she said, constantly pried into her dating life repeatedly inquiring if she date people from work and asked to drive her home. She also said he demanded explanations when she had meetings with coworkers or drinks with them after work. She said he joked about uh, his sexual organs to her and another female coworker. When she began to bristle, he grew contentious, uh, she said, stripping uh, her of projects, refusing to answer emails and, be and berating her in front of others. She said she went to his manager for a confidential conversation to try to get help, only to have that manager go straight to him to tell uh, straight to him and tell him of her complaint, which caused him to scream at her for making him look bad. The woman, fair retaliation at her review, said she uh, she asked a HR to sit in uh, sit in on it during the meeting while the HR representative watched over uh, a video conferencing screen. She said the manager leaned aggressively toward her over the conference room table and screamed after everything I did for you. HR did not allow his negative review of her to stand after uh, several of her peers praised her performance, she said. But then the HR person who had defended her left the company. And in the end, the manager was not fired, disciplined or given management or sexual harassment training, the woman said he was promoted. When I resigned, I emailed my boss in HR. I started seeing a therapist and I said, I've been diagnosed with severe depression and PTSD and HR never messaged me back, she said. A white woman from the ads operations team who left last year said she witnessed multiple managers across the company treat people very poorly, disrespectfully, yelling and screaming to the point they would cry. 
Some people were able to take it, but you shouldn't have to. It's emotional abuse from managers. Another woman who also said she was frequently criticized by her manager in front of the team said she refused to cry in front of her boss. During her time at Pinterest, she saw her blood pressure rise to near stroke levels and was briefly hospitalized. Several black former employees said public humiliation was a regular part of the job. Multiple people described Pinterest as a revolving door for people of color, especially in the sales organization. Of the former employees Business Insider spoke with, eight of them are black. They worked, at, uh, they worked in a variety of jobs, including sales policy and legal and administration. All but one left Pinterest within two years. While these former employees also saw white male and female employees cry, get fired or transferred to new teams on a whim, and be the targets of poor performance reviews, most of the black employees said they never, nevertheless felt singled out. For one black woman who spent over a year working at the company, the job fell apart on her first day. That's when she learned that the executives she was hired to support and had interviewed with had already been fired. This new recruit had been poached from a approach from an executive assistant position at another social network uh, within the promise of uh, expanded uh, project management responsibilities at Pinterest. She had been so enticed by the uh, chance to advance her career that she took a $10,000 pay cut. Soon after she started, she was assigned to work with a white female manager who replaced one of the uh, fired ones. The manager, she said, immediately began demanding personal chores like making doctor's appointments and paying parking tickets. She didn't invite the employee offsite and failed to call her, sorry, to fail to call on her during team meetings, uh, the employee said. When the manager contracted a urine, urinary tract infection, the assistant said she was publicly laid into and blamed for not scheduling bathroom breaks in her boss's calendar. Hmm. Other former uh, other black former employees said they enjoyed the work and were succeeding at or were succeeding at it, but eventually felt singled out by their managers. Several described receiving poor reviews or demotions, being the uh, subject of public humiliation, getting fired, or feeling like they had to leave. You come in and, and are happy, but the toxic culture eats away at your soul, said one black former salesperson who claimed he was pushed out in late 2019 after bringing in millions of dollars in sales from a high profile client. He said his, his account was reassigned to a white man and that he got, uh, he got cut from meetings and received a bad review. Another black salesperson who worked for a different manager in a different location shared a similar experience. Despite him having higher quotas uh, to hit uh, than the rest of his team, he said he worked hard to hit or exceed uh, sales goals. He got feedback that he was doing a great job. One day, the man said his unit manager called him into the office and fired him. He went to HR twice, but said he never received a reason for the firing. I'm not someone who will ever uh, play the race car. However, as a young Black male, I thought it would be a good idea to do my uh, due diligence, so I spoke to a lawyer, he said. The lawyer was shocked by his treatment, but he was not yet decided uh, if he's going to pursue a legal claim. I thought it was a, I thought it was discrimination. I still stand, stand by that. For another black salesperson who exceeded her sales goals, the situation involved working for a younger and experienced white female manager. The experienced salesperson had been a manager at another large tech company before Pinstress hired her. The younger manager had received little formal management training from Pinterest, a criticism sources expressed repeatedly. The younger manager, sorry, the young manager style, this person said, was to send a constant stream of criticism and demands to her staff, often shouting in public. People were crying every single day, the ex-employee said. The ex-employee felt particularly singled out to the point where she said co-workers noticed it too. The manager insisted she talked to her about her, uh, her home life, but then also accused her of taking more time off than other employees because she was a mother. 
she said. The former employee also said manager, uh, the manager frequently criticized the woman's performance in front of a whole team. The employee said she spoke with HR multiple times about her manager suggesting the company invest in some training. Instead, she said HR backed the manager and suggested she try to handle the situation herself. A bad review followed uh, despite her achieving her sales goals, the woman said. She said she agreed to be put on a performance plan and was fired four weeks after it concluded. Unbelievable, man. Some women who worked for Pinterest and spoke with Business Insider felt they were fairly paid. Others, such as Ozuma and Banks, said they were not paid fairly compared with male colleagues. One person familiar with, uh, with management uh, thinking at the whole, uh, thinking at the time, who is no longer with the company, pushed back on Ozuma and Banks claims. They said the two women were all already well paid and had received multiple raises, though not the precise promotion or pay they sought. This person believed Banks and Ozuma didn't have the necessary years of experience to be granted on the more senior level ranking they asked for. This is a story of mismanaged uh, expectations wrong, wrongly folded into African-Americans' collective story of oppression, this person said. However, Banks told us she never received a raise while there and felt her career was put in reverse, that she was unfairly stripped of her responsibilities. As to having the qualifications necessary for the rank and pay she was seeking, she said, I came into Pinterest with a master's degree from Oxford and just under six years of experience at Google. Business Insider viewed documents with the job descriptions for each level of seniority, and those descriptions contain mostly subjective language and no requirements for years of experience. Such subjective language, the women said, could be used for either justify or deny the promotions they sought, especially when they compared with how Hale uh, described Ozuma's role to her in writing, according to the email seen by Business Insider. Um, this, this is really, this really hits home uh, for me, okay? Very familiar with this experience, okay? Very familiar with it. Uh, let, me, let me point this out right here. Um, Human resources routinely sided with managers in, uh, when complaints were made. Multiple people said those employees were often received, uh, received negative reviews despite meeting performance goals while managers were promoted. They said, yeah, this is very common for black people in tech, okay? This is very common. Now I was on the panel on another channel where somebody said that there's no racism in tech. And I asked this person, what planet are you from, man? What world did you come from? And what world do you live with if this isn't happening? This is happening all over the United States, man. This is happening all over the United States. You got people in the manosphere, black men who are saying this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen, what are you talking about? Tech is all about, you know, meritocracy. Does this sound like meritocracy to you? Well, you, you know, some, some of these people, man, some of these black men in the manosphere, they, they say these things and I'm like, what, what, where did you come from? This, this story is so, and I, I've, you know, I've been talking about racism in tech for the last few years on here. Okay, and in the manosphere, I've been talking about this all over the place. This is still a major problem, even in 2020. You still have HR siding with white people and then pretending now in June of 2020 that Black Lives Matter. Okay. This is why I don't take the symbolism seriously when, when these companies come out and start, talk about their support for diversity and inclusion. This is bullshit. It's all bullshit. Okay, this goes on all the time. A black man brings in millions for Pinterest and gets replaced by a white, a Mazunga. How many times have we talked about this? Myself, Nagon 11, Complex Design. Everybody has talked about this in tech. This is a common issue. 
And so when people say, well, we, we need more black people in tech, yeah, you would get more if you would have more fair and equal practice. Well, life isn't fair and you can't expect companies to be fair because companies are here to turn profit. This isn't about turning profit. This is a racist, terroristic sort of culture, man. Pinterest isn't the only company that has this issue. There are many companies out in Silicon Valley, outside of Silicon Valley, that have this issue. And nobody wants to take this seriously um, on our side. We, we think this is this is you know a one-off issue. No, this is this is common in, in most tech companies. I don't care where you go. For black people to be mistreated like this in the workplace, this is common. This is very common. People taking pay cuts, not getting paid the, 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 the equitable amount that they should, that their co-workers are getting, being fired, you know, after doing very well and companies taking advantage, uh, uh, co-workers, uh, uh, companies putting uh, Mazungas in charge of big uh, projects that you, that you started that became profitable. And they get the credit at the end of the day. Meanwhile, you get scolded in front of other employees. This is very common. We covered an article last year about a, 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 a black woman who worked for Google. She talked about this. A black man who worked for Facebook. He talked about this last year, 2019. You can go through our archive. We, we, we've covered this. Okay. We covered this. You got all these people in the manosphere who claim to be conservative or whatever they claim to be and saying, pull yourself up by your bootstrap. These people did that. Graduate of Oxford, master's degree, six years at Google, still getting still getting you know railroaded in the tech industry. How is this possible? How is this possible? with a black president, after a black president, Black Lives Matter, BLM protests, diversity and inclusion, all, all of these things took place during this during that her, her, her tenure and she still got railroaded. How is this possible? And people wanna come here and criticize the work that the Black Brain Trust does. We do tech talks every Saturday. Okay, every Saturday. And you got people coming here critiquing our work, saying, you know, you, you know, you guys don't know what you're talking about. The reading is boring. We have to read because you're not gonna do it. Had we not pulled this article up, nobody else would be talking about it in the manosphere. Black men who brings in millions of dollars for a social media company gets railroaded by a Mazunga. Where have we heard this before? Okay. This has been going on for a long, long time. Nobody wants to talk about it because no one wants to rock the boat because they want to maintain their tokenism in, their, in whatever organization or whatever industry it is that they're in. In cybersecurity, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay. In IT, in, in general, it's the same thing. I talked about a, uh, a younger black male, millennial, who was more melanated than I was, who had um, his hair locked, okay? They gave this brother hell. He was taken out, um, he was picking up a, um, a, a, a decommissioned laptop and he accidentally dropped it. Someone reported him about incompetence or negligence and they fired him. The laptop didn't work and it was never gonna be used anyways. But this is the mentality that Mazungas have in the office, okay? He didn't even get a chance to plead his case. They, they, just, they just terminated him. He didn't do anything wrong. He just happened to drop it. It wasn't functional. It didn't matter. He had more than one device in his hand I think his hands got sweaty or something like that. And it, and it just happened to drop. Well, I think the cord was in front of his foot. And I think he just kind of, you know, dropped it. And either way, even if the laptop did work, 
it, it wouldn't have been damaged. Okay. It didn't fall violently on the floor. They this is this is how they treat people, man. This is how they treat black people in these tech in these tech organizations. I remember my first job in IT. Um, these, um, I, my first job in IT, or one of my first jobs in IT, I remember the G4 Max had came out. Okay, well, the G4 to G5 Max. Okay, we were at launch day, and um, this person, this hiring, this manager, this IT manager, um, wanted us to move these um, these G5s around, okay? Long story short, Teamsters have the contracts on all of the moving within major organizations, okay? Anything that requires more than five pieces of equipment to be moved, the Teamsters have to be called, you know, uh, the moving people have to be called in and the Teamsters have the contract on this, okay? That's how this works. They because the G5 Mac was, was that uh, brushed aluminum, they wanted to wrap up the, 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 the Macintosh so that it wouldn't scratch. They couldn't find where this G5 Mac was because they put it on a trolley and put it on the elevator and left it on the loading dock, okay? No one knew where it was. I got accused of stealing a G5 Macintosh. Now imagine this, if anybody knows what a G5 Mac looks like, you're talking about something the size of a suitcase. Why the hell would I take one of these computers? And where would I put it? In such a short, short amount of time, where would I put that device? But see, this is the mentality of a Mazunga, that because you're black, because you're around uh, um, expensive equipment and it's not here, it's gotta be you. It, she said it was there before you got there. Of course it was there before I got there. I didn't handle it. The mover was handling it. See, the mover put it inside of a blanket so that it wouldn't get scratched. And so the mover forgot about it and it ended up on a loading dock and they misplaced it, okay? Tech guys don't move equipment beyond five units. We don't touch it, okay? The, the, the uh, moving companies are in charge of that. My point I'm saying here is that it's not uncommon that a Mazunga wants to wants to uh, uh, be uh, um, wants to embarrass you in front of everybody. So when we found this when we found this Macintosh, right? She's looking at me. She looks at the guy, and then she walks away. And then when I had my one on one meeting with her, she wanted to apologize because. She knew the ramifications was going to come. I'm going to, she knew I was going to lawyer up and sue the company for discrimination, which would have devastated the company. This is a well known company in the United States. Okay, the headquarters is here. Had I launched a lawsuit against them, it would have brought the company right to its knees. They, and they knew that. They knew that. And so, in order to, you know, try to quell, the tensions, you know, she wanted to offer this uh, phony apology. The point that I'm making here is what's seen in this article, what I read in this article to everyone happens more often than not. Black people are underpaid in tech. They're underrepresented in tech. They're usually more skilled like this, like this woman here, uh, a master's degree from Oxford University and spent several years in and Google and other, other tech startups, and yet she still gets railroad. This happens all the time. This happens all the time. There's a lot of people who are black, who are co-conspirators in this as well. I see this in the manuscript. You got people on panels talking about there's no racism in tech. What world do you live in, man? This is the United States of America. Racism is part and partial to its development. <laughs> what, what world do y'all niggas live in, man? What are y'all talking about? We 
Yeah, Black Torch, that's actually a, a good point. The same organization where that um, young brother with the with the dreadlocks was fired from, you had a Mzunga who dropped a production server out of the data center. Nothing was said to him. Usually, for those of you who don't understand um, a server, usually in data centers, it's required that two people move a server, okay, in order to load it up correctly so that it doesn't drop. This guy tried to move it on his own. This Mazunga dropped the server, a production server. Nothing was said to him, okay? Young black male drops a non-functional laptop and he gets fired for negligence or, or incompetence. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous, right? This, this sort of experience um, being black in tech and then people come on here and try to say, oh, that doesn't happen. I spent this many years in tech and I have never had any experience. Good for you, nigga. <laughs> say that to the other people who have, the other black people who have had that experience. Right? There's so many people who want to dismiss your experience and, uh, uh, and, and these sort of consistent issues of racism in tech. Tech is supposed to be this liberal environment, but in reality, liberal racism is alive and well. It's not, you know, racism isn't just allocated to conservatives, man. The Tangerine Tyrant, the Republican Party, that's not just, that's not the face of racism, man. There's racism on both sides of the aisle. And it's evenly distributed throughout the tech industry. Okay, all this stuff about Black Lives Matter and Trans Lives Matter and rainbow flags and diversity and inclusion, it's all Botox. Okay, it's Botox. There's a lot of people who want to put on a facade that they're just so diverse and we just allow so many people and we have you know this sort of startup culture and we, we're just so you know inclusive and it's bullshit it's all bullshit it's all bullshit they don't want to talk about it because they don't want to compromise their position um in, in the tech industry, okay? They don't want to do it. They just want to pretend that, oh yeah, you know, man, black men just pulled themselves up by their bootstraps, man. Everything would be just fine, man. If you just, if you just did, you know, follow my blueprint, everything would be just fine. What about these people in this article, man? People getting yelled at, getting, you know, getting shitted on, underpaid, overworked, uh, you know, fired for in, um, video conferencing calls how is this possible man like what are you talking about what are some of you guys talking about man created a culture of firing that left everyone fighting for recognition internal teams felt pitted against each other and took credit for each other's work yeah this is very true man this is very true Multiple people suffered stress-induced conditions. Some required medical treatment, including for stroke-level high blood pressure, clinical depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Yeah, a lot of Black people, I, I've told this story before, but let me, let me tell it again. I knew a Black woman, a sister, who would take her frustrations out from work onto her son when she got home, man. She would beat her son profusely because he was the only source, uh, place where she can uh, source all her energy to, okay? All the masculine aggressions, okay? All the, all the stress that she endured at work, she would take it home and just beat her son until he got old enough. And when he got, you know, 15, 16 years old, that, that type of shit stopped with his big side 13 foot. But the point I'm making here is that that's how some people dealt with um, stress-induced conditions, man. She couldn't defeat the white, uh, 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 the Mazunga woman at work. And so what happens here is she takes her stress out on her son at home. And she beat him. You know, slapped the dog crap out of him and knocked his prescription glasses off and broke them. Those are $500 pair of glasses. You just lost them. Okay. Okay. <sighs> 
human resources, uh, human resources routinely cited with managers when complaints were made. Multiple people said that those employees often received negative reviews despite meeting performance goals while managers were promoted. They said, yeah, this is very true, man. This is very true. We got Black Torch on the panel. Hey, Mike. Uh, yeah, is a, you're just reading the story of people's lives, man. This happens all the time. I mean, I, I, I've seen it. It happened to me. Um, like I was trying to tell you, I've seen the guy. Uh, Brother, are, you out there, are you out there flying a kite or something? What's going on? I mean, no, that's the fan. I'll, I, hold on. I'll have to turn it down. It's hot in New York. Hold on. I bet, man. I bet. We got Super Chiz on the panel as well. Yeah, but it, I'll, I'm hold on. I'm turning it down. But what I'm trying to say is that it happens all the time, man. It happens all the time. I remember this guy crashed the network twice, and they he got a raise. Can you imagine that? He got he got he was making more money than all of us, mm-hmm. and he had no no degree at all. Yeah. And, and and then they got upset with me because I refused to train him. I said, I'm not training this guy. I'm not, it's not happening. Yeah. Well, see, now you're insubordinate. Oh, no. I, I Like I said, I've been, you know how it is. I'm an angry black dude. <laughs> that's what that's what they tell you. You're the angry black dude. But mm-hmm. I'm the only I'm the only one that has the skills that. So they left me alone. They just said, oh, leave him alone. Mm-hmm. But I, uh, I wouldn't, I don't help those guys. I just don't, I said, man, you got to sink or swim by your own skills. And then they uh, brought in all these H-1B visa dudes and then tried to tell me to train them. I said, I'm looking at these guys' so-called resumes. I said, they guys, they should have these skills already. Why I need to train them? Yeah. That's a, it's, 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 we're being squeezed on two sides. That's the thing that most people don't understand. We're being squeezed. Once you got the education, they'll bring in these lower education people from India with the, and other places with these fake resumes. And then they push them into these jobs and then they expect you to train them. Right. And then and then when you when you're on the overperforming side, they 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 do the squeeze play on you, like what happened to these uh Women at at at, at, uh, at, at at what's the name of the pinstripe whatever the company is because I it, it happened that uh I one of my boys at Apple he had to sue he had to sue him yeah he had to literally sue him and they, and they couldn't do anything all they do is pay you off and tell you all right goodbye that's it yeah severance package yeah you know but that's it and and so. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I, it's a situation, it, or it's more and more, I think we just need to build our own shit and leave these guys alone. And, and you know, that's all. Yeah, let's go to Super Triz. Um, yeah, I just had to vent, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine, that's fine. Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, uh, Mike V and uh, Black Torch. Peace, brother, peace. Um, what we see here, um, an employee at a job uh-huh. and um, whether it be from management or whether, whether it be laterally um, from colleagues um, creating a, a hostile work environment or at least ostracizing the very least ostracizing um, that black employee. Um, basically what you see is occupational redlining. Uh-huh. Um and it, it, it really, and, and the whole tokenism thing really does more of a disservice that you actually mentioned earlier, Mike V, because yeah. you have somebody, uh, you know, who is, you know, quote unquote, from the ADOS community who will discredit any person's claims and say, well, you know what, I made it. I don't have any issues. And, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not them, it must be you. And so they, they, and then they'll, they'll, 
they'll put that person at the forefront and say, look, you know, you know, there is no racist practices going on. It's just, you know, an angry black man or somebody trying to, um, you know, uh, compensate for their lack of performance and, you know, you know, things like that. And, you know, I think that again, um, it's, it's about competition. And so when you have somebody who actually, you know, quote unquote makes it or from their perspective makes it, who's black, in their mind, they feel as though if, well, you know, there can only be so many uh, black people at this particular job, or at least black people held in high regard. Um, and so they look at other black people. So I think uh, uh, other black people's competition. So I think, you know, we also have to think about the undermining that occurs from people that look just like us, you know, at these occupations. And, and I think Black Torch is right. You have to kind of create your own, own opportunities. That's the only way you're going to be treated fairly. You have, to, you have to actually be in control of the situation because at the end of the day, I mean, honestly, think about this, though. From a logical standpoint, devil, devil's advocate, if, if as a group, you have a particular advantage over the competition, right? And your advantage is not based on merit. It's based on affiliation. Why would you jeopardize that advantage? You'll do anything and everything to maintain your position. And you'll do anything and everything to bolster this advantage that you have over everyone else. Because you get the same, uh, you know, you get the same resolution without working nearly as hard. And so you, you marginalize everyone else who isn't part of that group because those people serve as competition and, 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 and especially like in the tech industry, you know, um, what, what many perceive to be a, a male dominated industry, it's, it's very competitive and, and cutthroat and people will do anything and everything um, to succeed, even at the expense of somebody else. I mean, it's true that life is not fair, but I mean, uh, at the very least, we have to do things to even odds, even if that means giving somebody that looks like us an advantage over an equally skilled employee of another ethnicity, because we've already been marginalized enough. Okay. So, like, if, if if I'm in a position, you know, allegedly, I'm, I, I, I may I may take a second glance at somebody um, who looks like me over somebody who doesn't, because I know what they have, I know what they've been through, and we got we got to have that mentality when we're in positions of power. Agreed. I totally agree because, believe me, the other groups are doing it. They, they do it all the time. I've seen it. These guys are uh, literally, they just came in with their passport in their hand and they show up to work and they, and you have to explain to them how things work. And it's, cra and it's crazy. And the thing you said, Super Triz, is really true because um, the, 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 the danger points for when I'm, um, when I'm working is having any interaction with HR, any interaction. I don't even talk to them because I hate to say it, but a lot of them are full of black women and it's 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 the danger zone. Well, I, mean, I, I don't wanna push back so much against what you're saying, but I, I do wanna keep it uh, in context of what's being said here, right? I know, but I'm, I'm just trying to, Mike, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying, I'm telling you the fact that HR, Whoever's in there, they're not our friends. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they've always been, uh, you know, hostile towards brothers, man. Um, and so, what, what the point that I'm making here is that, um, you know, I heard, I hear everyone saying, you know, you know, we should create our own opportunities. The problem is a lot of these companies are siphoning off your tax dollars. Okay, when they come into certain cities, okay, they. they if you're if you work if you work in the same city that you live in, these companies are making um, you, you know have, have, uh, uh, benefited from tax abatements um, to establish their business there, and a part of part of that you know abatement is about diversity and inclusion. They're supposed to bring black people in specifically, you know, to create equitable um, means within the organization. And what's happening here is that more often than not. Black people will be a railroad, like in this article right here. No one would ever have known that um, Pinterest, as, as a social media company, would have these sort of uh, 
sort of toxic culture, but toxic culture seems to be the standard within the, within the tech industry. I used to work in a security operations center some years ago, and um, one of my boys, Arab, he was Arab, um, was continuously harangued in, 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 in the workplace by Mazungus. You know, you know, one day we, we, he and I had um, lunch um, and uh, we came back from lunch and the Mazungas were waiting by his desk. And they, you know, they, they kind of surrounded him and, you know, asked him all of these CCNA questions, you know, and they had the answers. So they, cause they had Googled all the information, but they expected him to know all the information, okay? And to know all the answers. And, you know, when, when, when he took time to answer it, they thought that he was incompetent. But in reality, you all were just incompetent too. <laughs> you had to Google all the answers, man. But this is the sort of uh, uh, bullshit that goes on in these organizations, man, um, in, in the tech field. Um, that, that's why I tell guys in here to get your certifications, man. Get as many as you can. Don't ever let anybody tell you not to get a certification. Get as many certifications as you can, man. Don't, 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 don't waste your time, you know, not doing anything, man. If there's a certification available and you can afford it, man, study for it and go take it, man. Because that's what these guys do in tech. Okay, they love to to be the masters of every uh, 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 of hoarding information, right? They want to be like the ones who who you have to go through them in order to get you know, answers on things. See, when you come in with, your, with, with answers that are sufficient, if not um, exceedingly greater than theirs, then they become uptight, okay? They highly, highly finished once you come in there with those, with, with, the, with, the, with the credentials. And so that's why I'm a big proponent of, uh, of getting certifications because it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. You want to keep one leg up on these people, man. Um, every single opportunity that you can, man. Um, what what what's said in this article, and what's going to be what's been said in the last few articles, the last few weeks that we've been going over these, a lot of racism is starting to pop up in these organizations, um, despite the fact that they claim to be liberal. Okay, all the stuff about you know um, you know li li liberals are so inclusive; they're not inclusive unless they can exploit you, man. That's how they see it. You know, Mike, uh, this this kind of brings into question. Um, again, you know, we, you know, we, we kind of I'm, I'm kind of referencing a, or actually I'm drawing a um, a congruency with redlining. Um, in that we see, or well, well, now we're hearing some accounts of people who experience um, these racially uh, 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 motivated uh, uh, marginalization, but. The question then becomes, how many people didn't even get a chance? Yeah. How many people didn't even get hired? How many people didn't even make it past an interview? And, and, and if you have a certain ethnic name um, that appears on a resume, you're probably glossed over. Um, and, you know, the people that do get hired that, that happen to be, you know, black or maybe what they would consider people of color, um, a lot of times they're due only because of diversity initiatives. The, the, the actual people that are doing the uh, interviewing and the hiring, um, they, don't, they don't really want to hire. They, they'd rather have the actual, uh, uh, the workplace look completely homogenous. If it was up to them, that's what it would look like. I, I don't disagree with you. I think the problem I see is that these people don't own the organizations. They don't own the organization. They're not. At the, at the at the top of the food chain they they just kind of work just like everybody else does but they have they brought in this sort of they, they brought in racism into the organization where it wasn't necessary right because they could be let go from the organization at any given point too trust me if a me too case comes in for some one of these mazungas they out of there too right so point that i'm making here is that um these people um, infuse the environment with the racism where it's not necessary um, and create this sort of hostility and guys go to HR and they're not getting support, man. The brother in, 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 in uh, Connecticut at the Budweiser facility, Omar Thornton, he went to HR three times 
and he did nothing about the racism that he complained about. He came back to work with a blicky and took those guys out and then took himself out. This could have been avoided had HR just taken action, man. This, this is, seems, to be, seems to be a very common issue where HR sides with Mazungas over, over Black people, even though there's credible evidence to show that this is happening. I, I think in last year or two years ago in, in Ohio or Indiana at, at the uh, either the Ford plant or the GM plant, um, a brother found a noose on his desk. Okay, and the Confederate flag. This, 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 this is what goes on in these workplaces. This brother went to HR and he did nothing about it. Actually, I think it was in the locker room. But the point of the matter here is this is what goes on. And people will tell you that if you just start your own job, then that would solve things. But it does not really solve it for the people who did not create their own job. And the people who did not get their, their opportunity, like Triz is saying, I know a lot of guys like that that are out of work right now, man. Tech, tech guys who, who, who just could not get that fair break. They couldn't get the fair shake. Um, you know, and so that's why I'm big on certifications. That's why I, I tell guys, um, put yourself in that position, man, where um, all, all of these things, you know, are, are gonna matter uh, going forward. It's better to have those certifications in, in that, in that you know, micro degree or whatever it is, that associate's degree. You know, associate's degrees, man, if you, if you, if you have a household that makes less than $27,500 a year uh, uh, per capita uh, in, in the uh, uh, in income, total income and in assets, uh, you're, you're, you're entitled to um, up to $10,500 in grants, man. You don't have to pay that stuff back. You can use that for school. All right, let me jump to the next item on the docket. Um, last item on the docket. All right, this is from the New York Times.com. Wrongfully accused by an algorithm. In what may be the first known case of its kind, a faulty facial recognition match led to a Michigan man's arrest for a crime he did not commit. This is about policy. I heard on MLT's uh, live stream last night, guys are trying to argue against policy. If you were just a good brother, if you just went SYSBM, okay, if you just stopped being a nigga, this wouldn't happen to you. Let those guys over there tell it. On a Thursday afternoon in January, Robert Julian Bolchak uh, Williams was in his office at an automotive uh, supply company when he got in a call from the Detroit, Detroit Police Department telling him to come to the station to be arrested. He thought at first it was a prank. An hour later, when he pulled into his driveway in a quiet sub, uh, subdivision in Farmington Hills, Michigan, a police car pulled up behind, blocking him in. Two officers got out and handcuffed Mr. Williams on his front lawn in front of his wife and two young daughters who were distraught. The police wouldn't say why he was being arrested, only showing him a piece of paper with his photo in the words felony warrant and larceny. His wife, Melissa, asked where he was being taken. Google it, she recalls an officer replying. The police drove Mr. Williams to a detention center. He had his mugshot, fingerprints, and DNA taken and was held overnight. Around noon on Friday, two detectives took him to an interrogation room and placed three pieces of paper on a table face down. When was the last time you went to Shinola store? One of the detectives asked. In Mr. Williams' rec recollection, Shinola is an upscale boutique, uh, boutique that sells watches, bicycles, and leather goods in the trendy midtown neighborhood of Detroit. Mr. Williams said... He and his wife checked it out and was the first open uh, and, and when the store first opened in 2014. The detective turned over 
the first piece of paper, it was still an image from a surveillance video showing a heavyset man dressed in black and wearing a red St. Louis Cardinals cap standing in front of a watch this way. Five timepieces worth $3,800 were shoplifted. Is this you, accident detective? The second piece of paper was a close-up. The photo was blurry, but it was clearly not Mr. Williams. He picked up the image and held it next to his face. No, this is not me, Mr. Williams said. You think all black men look alike. Mr. Williams knew that he had not committed the crime in question. What he could not have known as he sat in the interrogation room is that the case may be the first known account of an American being wrongfully arrested based on a flawed match from a facial recognition algorithm, according to experts on technology and the law. A nationwide debate is raging about racism in law enforcement across the country, millions are protesting, not just uh, the actions of individual officers, but bias in the systems used to surveil communities and identify people for prosecution. Facial recognition systems have been used by uh, police departments, uh, sorry, police forces for more than two decades. Recent study by MIT and the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, have found that while technology works relatively well on white men, what Mazungas, the results are less accurate for other demographics, in part because of the lack of diversity in images used to develop the underlying databases. Last year, during a public hearing about the use of facial recognition in Detroit, an assistant police chief was among those who raised concerns on the question of false positive. That is absolutely factual. And it's well documented, James White said, so that corners, uh, that concerns me as an African-American male. This month, Amazon, Microsoft, and IBM announced they would stop or pause their facial recognition offering for law enforcement. The, uh, the gestures were largely symbolic given that the companies are not big players in the industry. The technology police departments use is supplied by companies that aren't household names, such as Vigilant Solutions, Carnatech, NEC, Rank One Computing, and Clearview AI. Claire Garvey, a lawyer at Georgetown University's uh, Center on Privacy and Technology has written about problems with the government's use of facial recognition. She argues that low quality search images such as a still image from the, a grainy surveillance video should be banned and that the system currently in use should be tested rigorously for accuracy and bias. There are mediocre algorithms and there are good ones and law enforcement should not, uh, uh, should only buy ones uh, by the good ones, uh, Mr. Garvey said, or sorry, Ms. Garvey said. About Mr. Williams' experience in Michigan, she added, I strongly suspect that this uh, this is not the first case to misidentify someone to arrest them for a crime they didn't commit. This is just the first time we know about it. Mr. Williams' case uh, combines flawed technology with poor police work, illustrating how facial recognition can go awry. The Shinola shoplifting occurred in October 2018. Katherine Johnson, an investigator at Mackinac uh, Partners, a loss prevention firm, reviewed the store surveillance video and sent a copy to the Detroit police, according to their report. Five months later, in March 2019, Jennifer uh, Colson, a digital image examiner for the Michigan State Police, uploaded a probe image a still from the video showing the man in the Cardinals cap to the state's uh, facial recognition database. The system would have mapped the man's face and searched for similar ones in the collection of 49 million photos. The state's technology is supplied for uh, $5.5 million by a company called DataWorks Plus, funded in South Carolina in, tw in 2000. The company first offered a, a mugshot management software, it said Todd Pastroni, a general manager. In 2005, the firm began to expand the product, adding fish recognition uh, tools developed by outside vendors. When one of these subcontractors uh, develops an algorithm for uh, recognizing databases, DataWorks attempts to judge its effectiveness by running searches using low quality images of individuals it knows are present in a system. We've tested a lot of, uh, we've tested a lot of garbage out there. Mr. Petrini uh, said, these checks, he added, are not scientific. DataWorks does not formally measure the system's accuracy or bias. 
We become a pseudo expert in the technology, Mr. Pastrami said. In Michigan, the data work software used by the state police incorporates components developed by the Japanese tech giant NEC and by Rank One Computing based in Colorado, according to Mr. Pastorini in a state police spokeswoman. In 2019, algorithms from both companies were included in a federal study. Over 100 facial recognition systems that, uh, that found they were biased, falsely identifying African Americans and Asian faces 10 times to 100 times more than Caucasian faces. After Ms. Colson, one of the state's uh, one of the state police, sorry, uh, after uh, Ms. Colson of the state police ran her search. Uh, of the probe image, the system would have provided a row of results generated by NEC and a row from rank one, along with uh, confidence stores. Scores, sorry. Mr. Williams' driver's uh, license photo was among the matches. Ms. Colson sent it to uh, the Detroit police as an investigative lead report. This document is not a positive identification. The file says in bold capital letters at the top. It is an investigative lead only and is not probable cause for arrest. This is what technology providers and law enforcement officers always emphasize when defending facial recognition. It is only supposed to be a clue in the case, not a smoking gun. Before arresting Mr. Williams, investigators might have sought other evidence that he committed the theft, such as eyewitness testimony, location data from his phone and proof that he, owed, uh, that he owned the clothing that the suspect was wearing. In this case, however, according to the Detroit police uh, report, investigators simply uh, included Mr. Williams' picture in a sex pack photo lineup. They created and showed to Mr. Johnson Shinola's loss, pre uh, loss prevention contractor and she identified him. Interesting. I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but um, What I will say here is this. Um, I will say a big lawsuit is about to go down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, and that person that identified him, she screwed. Yeah, I wanted because I wanted to actually touch on this. Um, I won't go all into this because uh, I'm pretty sure the the uh, end result is all the same. You know, this reminds me of the case. I think it was up by you, uh, Mike. Remember that 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 um, that chemist that was in, um, that was doing all those cases, and she said that all these people were uh, for, with, with drugs, and found out that she wasn't doing any of those cases. She was just passing them through. Not just that; she had falsified that she graduated from UMass. Yeah, and 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 it was like. She did this over a 10 year period and put like thousands of people in jail. It, it's, it's just mind bottling. And, and they already, but we knew that this facial recognition had a problem with, from the, when they introduced we remember the, that game that we play, it wouldn't recognize black people's faces. Yeah. And they knew this. So I don't understand, you know, it's just amazing, they, 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 you know, but I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't put anything past them these days, nothing. Well, the, the thing I wanted to bring up here was that um, I was also a victim of this as well, uh, false information being used on background research on me, uh, background investigation on me, what they call a DBI. They, they, one day I got a phone call saying I need to leave the office, okay? And I said, why do I have to leave? They said, you have to just come downstairs. I came downstairs and they turned my badge off. They said, you know, you can't go back up. You know, um, your DBI came back and, you know, um, it, 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 it didn't clear. I said, what do you mean it didn't clear? Well, there's a few discrepancies on there. I said, first of all, I don't, I don't smoke. I don't drink. You know, I, I don't have a criminal record. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, we, we're not allowed to disclose that. So I got the, you know, they sent the- um, The copy of it, yeah. Yeah, the copy of it that day to my to my um, my house. So I went home and looked at it. I said, let me go do uh, 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 some search on this, man. 
come to find out, there was a black man, same first, middle, and last name as me, same age as me, same color eyes as me, same complexion as me, different social security number. Okay. Mm -hmm. so they went the whoever did the the DBI went off of just that and that alone. Didn't bother to scrutinize the social security number. So I went to the Texas Department of Corrections and found out this who this person was. This person is still in, in jail, still serving time. Mm -hmm. So I printed all this stuff out from the, the Texas Department of Corrections, I sent it right back to them. I said, hey, this is not me. What, what you're accusing me of, this is not me, man. Oh, we don't have to disclose anything. I bet you will now. So I sent it to them, faxed it to them, came back about a week or so later, actually a couple of weeks later, and um, I said that they were going to go through it, and, and um, they knew a lawsuit was coming. Yeah, they, most definitely. They knew a lawsuit was coming. So what I'm saying here is do do due diligence, man. Don't be so quick to just you know accept whatever they tell you. Do you oh know? yeah, uh, that's why I, I I that's why I like being in the security field because we can dig down into these uh, websites and all these other things that they say, oh, well, you were there doing this. I said, really? Okay, well, what site was that? And then you go in and say, like, that's not what the logs say. You know, uh, I, it's just, I don't know what to tell you, man. Um, it's just that it, it's, it seems like there's a new, I hate to use this word, but there's a new Jim Crow that's, that's sticking his head out, man, and they're trying to use algorithms and AI to try to keep this, to keep us uh, in, in check. You know, it's, it's just crazy. And Super Trace, uh, you a nurse, right? I don't think he's on, okay. Sorry, I'm driving. What's what's going on? Can no, no, me? I was. I, yeah, I, I just want to know. You are a nurse, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I I know that we um, my my company is also looking into also how genetic information they could use that against you also. So there's a whole lot of stuff coming down the pipe, man. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that that's uh, you know from a digital forensic standpoint that they're not getting right. Um, you know, it, it's unfortunate now they they're starting to use cre people's credit reports against them. So if you defaulted on a student loan or a couple of credit cards or something like that, uh, or repossession of vehicles, been evicted from the house, they 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 they're, they're using that against people now. You know, who's more more likely to be impacted by this? Uh, you know, it's usually black people. Yeah, uh, I, but in New York State, uh, they can't do it anymore. New York, I think New York and New Jersey, they, they don't allow you to do that anymore. So, and the, I think Congress is going to take some action because you got 41 million people out of work. That's 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 a large percentage for your economy. If everybody, if, if all of a sudden they get credit scores of 300, what they're going to do? They have to change the system. That they're going to have to. Yeah, um, I don't know, man. I just think that um, the biases in, 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 in these sort of um, facial recognition, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, reinforcement learning, we're not, we're not really at the table um, cultivating the technology, okay? We're not there. Uh, well, I happen to know one of the one of the top guys in AI. He's at Stanford, and he's an African guy. He's at the table. Yeah, uh, but, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but relative, relative to the to the to the uh, um, population, we're, we're not really there. Right? I agree with that. Walking uh, through a room where where artificial intelligence and facial recognition technology, uh, computer vision technology is is being cultivated, black people are not driving that technology. And so they're, they're always outside of it, um, even though it's, it's being used against them. I think that's what the brother from Facebook was, was saying last year, that 
relative to, to, to the user base that um, Facebook has with black people, that is not the percentage of that, you know, that user base is not reflected within the organization itself. You know why? Because the gatekeepers to get into Facebook is Facebook doesn't go to uh, any black universities uh, or anything or any uh, tier two universities. They go to the top ones and try to uh, pick people from that. And then they have their own um, um, or pipeline of people they, and they, they get from other countries. See, it, it's, it's a, and, and that's what I'm trying it's it's just it's just the only one I see that made a constant change was Google when they Google came to Howard and they set up that that incubator there in Howard, but the rest of them forget about it. They don't they don't they're not doing anything. I think Microsoft has an incubator in uh, Morehouse, if I remember correctly. Um, oh, really? I didn't know that. I know that Google was did one at uh, Howard. I know that. Yeah, if I remember correctly, Microsoft um, and Morehouse have a partnership. Um, and so the, the, the thing I'm saying here is that um, because we're on the outside of all this technology, because we're on the outside, uh, at least the, the development of it, and, and we're being disproportionately discriminated against within the organizations that we're in, um, I, I wish Black Lives Matter, you know, if, if they're going to make any noise, man, make it there. Make it where it matters, man, um, in, in that regard. Now, you know that that is never going to happen. Black lives matter. It ain't our lives they're talking about, and you know that. I know that. I know that. <laughs> talk about everything else except for that. I'm saying this is the one of the, the, the these articles are just like a myriad of um, multiple, um, you know, systemic issues that uh, impacts black people. It's well, it, 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 um, I'm surprised that more groups, even if it's not BLM, I'm surprised that more other groups aren't having these conversations openly. Uh, I know Nisby, we've had these conversations long before uh, COVID, um, probably for the last year and a half. And um, many of the organizations are all, you know, when, when, when they get put on the spot at these meetings, you know, they're always talking about, you know, diversity and inclusion, diversity and inclusion, you know this person and that person. Uh, yeah, there's some areas where they've done well, but um, overall, they're not, it's not reflected. If the, if the population of, of, of a city of, for Black people is something like 30, 30%, and yet less than 5% of your organization is comprises of African Americans, there's a problem. Oh, we know that. Uh, but that's, but that's, but then they'll tell you they can't find qualified people. And then you said, okay, where did you go? Oh, we went to Stanford. We went to all these other people. And then when you go to Stanford, you said, hold on, you got a hundred black students there and you found no, none, no black students or one. And then, and then they got no excuse. These, they, 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 they will harangue in front of Congress because a guy came up with these numbers and tried to say, oh, we couldn't find any students. The guy says, no, that's not true. Here's the students at Berkeley. Here's the students. This is how many Black Hispanic students, and 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 you took none of them. So, I, I, uh, it's just a game. Let's be honest. They it's a, just a, a game. They just shuffling the deck again. They all they that's all they do. If you if you if you're strong enough to stay in, and another thing that uh, happens, Mike, that uh, is kind of interesting. If you're in a group. And you're the only black person in the group. When they bring in another black person, it usually tries to push you out. That's what they do. They could be like ten. It could be ten people in the group, and, and the the three of them could be the weakest guy. But they bring in a black dude. It's probably to try to push you out. That's what they do. Yeah. The idea. The idea here is that. Um... To create, you know, the the divide and conquer uh, tactics, man, to uh, either get you all to be at odds with each other or uh, to create some kind of tension uh, that's unnecessary, unwarranted too. Uh, I, I've seen this myself. Um, guys in IT who are kind of placed on different teams um, are, are 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 strategically kind of separated so that they can't um, build a cohesion with each other. Um, or any sort of camaraderie. Uh, and then when they do, 
uh, create some kind of camaraderie with each other, uh, despite the fact they're on different teams or different departments, um, that's frowned upon. It's really frowned upon. They don't want you talking to, you know, Africans or talking to um, anybody else. And you know, you you should you should just be kind of marginalized into your own little sector and mind your own business. And, yeah, and you know why it's that is because if they see two or three of y'all talking, oh, what are you guys planning? You yeah. know, I'm saying like, what is this a coup d'état? We're not planning anything. We're just talking. Yeah. yeah. You know? But that's what happens. And, and Mike, uh, what is going on with the channel? I'm not getting any of these alerts until they like a day later. Uh, are they still doing the banning of the channel? Yeah, we've been shadow banned. Uh, even though we may have been live, the red dot is not there. And so I'm not sure how to even fix something like that other than get the push alerts for your desktop, okay? Push alerts for your desktop matter. Um, yeah, because I missed a few of them because I, I didn't even know. And, and then I said, like, and then it said live, and I'm, I go click on it, and it says it's over. I said, what the hell is going on? Yeah, that's what it's telling me right now, that the live stream is over, even though we're live right now. Yeah, and so, and, and you know, if they're doing a delivery, it, it's just, you know, um, I think, you know, we may have to uh, come up with another solution. <laughs> Because all this is all we're doing is giving information. You're not, you're not, you're not telling people, you know. We're not disparaging people. Just tell them, no, this is how you get a, a better uh, quality of life. You know, this is how you you move up. This is how you you uh, navigate. You know, and, you know. I don't understand why they're doing it to this channel. There's no hate. It's not you know disparaging anybody. It's just telling them like how to get ahead and if that's the issue then we have a greater issue if they don't want us to talk about how we can help each other then we really got an issue yeah, yeah. um if you enable desktop alerts um on your chrome browser it will automatically push um black brain trust alerts to your um uh to your screen to your to your desktop um so the way how you do it let's see if i can um see if i can find it Oh, here it is right here. Okay. Um, posted this some months ago. Um, it posted this a couple months ago. So if you go to your YouTube channel um, and go to the settings portion of it, it's just a uh, general. Okay, I got it. I can find it from there. Yeah, here it is right here. So it says account notifications, playback and performance. Go to general and then push desktop notifications to Chrome. Receive notifications on your computer even if you're not watching YouTube. Okay, so that's how that works. Okay. Yeah, it's just annoying, you know, some things you want to hear and then you can't hear about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I don't know why YouTube is doing this. I don't. I mean, it doesn't cost them anything for you know, uh, you know, pushing these alerts. I think they're starting to give preferential treatment to uh, some of these bigger channels, um, which I find interesting because if uh, their channel is so big, then they don't they don't need any sort of preferential treatment. Um, well, you know, it's it, it's it's the topics. You know, all our topics are not sexy. You know, <laughs> you know. We don't, we don't have sexy topics. We got, you know, on dating and things like that and fragrances. Nah, man. Um, I just find that to be interesting, though, um, that we're, get, we're getting treated like this. It wasn't like that before. I'm not sure when it started or why it started like this. But Yeah, I remember I used to get them all, and then about six or seven months ago, it started acting crazy. Yeah, so that's 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 the tip, you know. Enable desktop uh, notification. Mm -hmm. You should be able to get it on your phone as well. All right. Um, thank you all for joining us, man. And please hit the like button if not already done so. Share the video if possible. Hit that notification bell.
so you get all the updates from the Black Brain Trust, from, <clears throat> including those posted on the community tab. 